Hi, my name is Susan Magnano and I'm a photographer and light painter and we've had an incredible week here with B&H filming our light painting series. And today we're gonna to be talking about editing. We have been in the Catskills photographing an amazing barn in the dark environment. Next, we moved to Manhattan where we photographed a dancer in front of the city skyline. We've created so many awesome images and now we're gonna go through them and see what worked and what didn't work. Are you ready for this? Let's check it out. So what I'm gonna do is take you through our whole photo shoot, starting from our basic composition shots to how we added light. And I think this will really kind of go through the steps we took. When we're shooting and creating these pictures, it's really kind of fast paced. So I may not have gone through all these details. So I'm really excited to have the time, the luxury of the time to kind of go through my thought process here. So. First, we're gonna start off when we were in the Catskills. And we found this really cool barn. I got my composition right. I kinda of wanted to be at a low angle because I wanted the barn to look larger than life. I did a test shot just to get test the composition. And then I moved on to my shot where I was kinda of waiting for it to be blue hour. You can see that there's a little glow of light here and that's because of the video light from filming this, this movie. Then this is our shot when we started adding lights. And my concept here was I wanted to give this barn dimension and color and life. I wanted to take it from this shot to this shot. And I think it was working. So what we did was we put two lights, one inside the barn pointing up and it was a red gelled Luxley fiddle and then a blue light on the exterior. But the idea here was to have the lights scraping across the scene from the back corner. When I'm creating light in my light paintings, I want to see the shadows and the highlights. And in this one, I kind of wanted to be shooting into the shadows. So that is why I put the blue light in the far corner of my scene. You can even see a little light refracting with a little light beam coming from that window. That's actually just light catching on the bulbous lens of my Olympus camera. So I thought this was kind of a great starter point. And what I liked about it was this was still blue hour. You can see the clouds. There was a little bit of light in the sky and it was pretty cool. My test exposure was 30 seconds. And the reason why I could do this for 30 seconds was because we were shooting in the complete darkness. And by doing 30 seconds, I was getting a lot more ambient light, getting to see a little bit more of those trees and, um, and my subject wasn't moving. So it all kind of worked out great. This shot, we kind of added a little bit of light to the front of the barn because it was a little bit dark. I thought it kind of worked, but we had another idea in mind. This is a shot where we added a green light because I thought, let's make the barn multicolors. And I thought that's kind of fun. And one thing to notice, because I was shooting with auto white balance, when I added the green Luxley fiddle to the front of the barn, it turned the sky purple. So these are kind of the things that you have to watch out where when you're shooting with auto white balance, if you want to avoid that, put your camera into um, a dedicated tungsten or just kind of select a white balance and you won't have this problem. I think it was kind of cool because maybe I would have chose to make the sky purple because I think it complements the red, the blue, and the green. Next, we added the smoke and the smoke machine actually had a little light on it that um, came out of the smoke machine. So it actually overpowered our shot. It wasn't great. So we had to turn off the light on the smoke machine. Now we're really forming the mood. And like I said, when I want to visualize my image, my visualization was let's have a cool barn. Let's add some color. Let's add some smoke and like start to give it atmosphere and tell a story. So now not only do we have a colorful barn, we have a smoky barn. What we were missing was, was a human element. So we had Alexandra or cowboy come into the shop. And at first I thought it was good if he just stands in the doorway. And I thought it was a little bit too small in the frame. Um, I think it was working, but I had him come to the edge of this dorm frame, which was also cool, but the smoke machine was not triggered here. So we did the smoke machine again. And now because we had some backlight shining on him, it actually overpowered him because he moved to the front of the frame. He wasn't hiding the backlight and now it was too much light. But one thing I could do here, because now this is editing, now we're kind of getting into the images that are ready to be edited. Let's talk about how we could have made this better. I think it's an okay image. I could bring down the highlights um, and I could raise the shadows a little bit and add a little bit of clarity to add a little bit sharpness, but this still wasn't one of my favorite images. We're still kind of building on it and getting the proper picture. This was the one I fell in love with. 
we had the proper smoke, we had the proper lighting, and now we just need to finesse it. So what I'm gonna think first is I'd like to raise the shadows a little bit to see a little bit more of what's going on. And I'm going to bring the highlights down a little bit. So that's nice but let's take it to the next level. So one thing when I look at this picture that annoys me is the sky. The sky is this kind of muted, like brown color and everything else in the picture is so vibrant. So what I wanna do is add some color to the sky. So in masking, we have a tool that will select the sky. But what I'm noticing is, it's having a hard time selecting the trees from the sky because it is a night photo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete that mask and it could do one thing that's actually gonna help Lightroom find it. I'm gonna raise the exposure. So now there's a separation between the sky and the trees. The sky is now more brighter and it can have an easier time selecting. I'm also gonna add a little bit of clarity again so it can find the edges. And now let's watch what happens. When I go to masking, I'm gonna select the sky again and now it's able to select things a little bit easier. That looks cool. The reason why the sky is green is because I've made my mask green. When I originally had it red, it was actually looking like it blended in with the red we had light painted in the barn. It was a little bit hard to distinguish. So the, for the purpose of editing this picture, I've made my mask green. So to avoid that confusion, you can see how that already kind of changed it. So first let's deselect the overlay. Let's look at the blue sky and let's go back to the picture. We're gonna bring the exposure down again. So you can see how that kind of brings a little bit of detail. One thing you'll notice is that it didn't select this part of the sky. I mean, Lightroom's good, but there are some things that it doesn't do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back in, we're gonna add, we're gonna click on the mask and we're gonna add the paintbrush tool and we're gonna kind of paint in this area. Great, so now that this will blend with the sky, even in here a little bit, awesome. So now that we've done that, we're gonna go back here. And now it kind of looks like it's uniformed. Now it looks like that's part of the sky because it was kind of having that like brown effect still. Lightroom's really good at doing a lot of editing, but sometimes there's a little things that you need to help it with. So I think that looks really cool. Another thing I would do is I wanna draw more attention to the cowboy. So I'm gonna go back to masks. I'm gonna add another new mask layer and I'm gonna add the radio filter. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Kind of put it right over the center of the picture because that's where we want it to be. I'm going to show the overlay so you can see it. Kind of right there. And I'm going to raise the brightness a little bit and I'm going to lower the highlights. So now we can see a little bit more of our cowboy. And I'm just going to show you the before and afters of the masks. So that looks good. See how we changed the image? We took it from kind of a great base exposure and great picture, and we made it something a little bit more special. The last thing I'll do for this picture is, I really like this highlight on the ground, but I think it's a little bit too bright in the corner. And you always wanna draw your eyes into your subject. So I'm gonna do one more mask. And I'm gonna bring the linear line right in the corner. Perfect. I think that's awesome. So this kind of completes this image. We have a nice cowboy, we have the smoke, we have the red and the blue, we have the green grass. And I mean, I, this is what I had originally visualized. So we took an image that was this cowboy, this barn, and we made it this picture. I mean, what a transformation. This is what light painting can do. You can take an average scene and make it extraordinary. So, Let's move on. We did a couple more pictures with the cowboy. And we thought, let's add some light writing. You'll notice that there's a red squiggly line in this one. This is from my flash. My flash has a little red button on it and I didn't turn the flash away from the camera. All right, this is getting better. I like it a lot. Here we tried to do something different where I put my flash on the other side. So in the previous picture, I was light painting the cowboy from behind because I wanted to create that moody, dramatic look. And then I thought, well, what would it be like if I shot him from the other side? So you can actually see the flashlight um, on the right-hand side. You can see where I strobed him. And I kind of like it. If this was like, um, if I really wanted to know who this cowboy Alejandro was, this would be a nice portrait. But I kind of like the moodiness of the other ones. You can see that I'm starting the tube from behind his leg. 
but he has very skinny legs, so you can still see the tube. And why you see that line is because it's a double exposure of, or like even holding the tube in that spot for too long, it burnt in a little bit more. So that's like a lesson to kind of do your tube line painting and turn off the light quicker. All right, again, now we have that backlight again, and I'm starting to really like this. This is like now, we've really like honed in on a different style and a different look. And the way I did this one was I flashed them from the left-hand corner and then I went to the right-hand corner and flashed them again. And that's why I have that little starburst there. That's the strobe going off. And then I took the light tube and did the circle. And you can see those speckles that are happening. It's because it actually started raining. Guys, we are so dedicated to light painting that we were just light painting in the rain. And um, I did a couple more. We added a little bit of smoke I didn't kind of care for that smoky effect with the with the strobe light. And here again, we backlit the strobe, the smoke, um, which I think I could I could actually do something like this and bring down the highlights, but I didn't think that was worth it. And then we nailed it. Alejandro offered to take his guitar out, and it was perfect. And the way I lit this one was I lit him from about a 45 degree angle to cast that light coming across his shoulder. And then we did the tube behind him. And I think it just came out perfect. We didn't do any backlight. We didn't do any smoke. Some pictures are just perfect as is. I want Alejandro to stand out in this shot. So I'm going to use a mask. I'm gonna mask over the foreground so we can dim it a little bit. We're gonna take down the highlights. Then I wanna also dim this part of the barn because it's stealing my attention away from Alejandro. So we're gonna come here. We're gonna do the radial filter and we're gonna dim this down. So now look how our attention went more to Alejandro now that we've dimmed the darker parts. Just to complete this Catskill photo shoot, we went from a barn that looked like this, pretty cool, but we added some color to it. We added a cowboy to it and some smoke, which made it extra interesting and extra moody. And then we did some really cool light painting. So that kind of completes our Catskill photo shoot. I think we're ready to move on to New York City. So here we are in Central Park, an amazing place to do photography, but also an amazing place to do some light painting. So we've selected our location, which is gonna be on the rocks overlooking the city skyline. Now we added my model. And one thing I wanna say is I also switched to live comp mode. You're gonna notice my settings are a little bit funky here. It says two seconds, 4.5 and 200, ISO 200. So once I switched to live comp, which is a feature that uh, the OM system has, the OM-1 is the camera I'm using. By using this live composition feature, I'm able to create in a bulb mode and it's not gonna overexpose the background as long as in my first exposure, I don't overexpose the background. So um, when it says two seconds, it actually is a bulb mode, but two seconds was the base exposure. So in this picture, my light tube was actually too bright. So I actually had to dim the light tube. And this is one more test. So I'm kind of just still figuring it out checking out the light tube. So in this one, I realized that the live tube was br proper brightness, but the background was a little bit dark. So I made it a little bit brighter. So I don't have all the in-between shots that I would normally do the testing. I kind of just threw the model in there and started shooting. The reason why it wasn't successful is because there was a light source. Maybe it was the video light. Maybe it was some sort of light from um, a little buggy or something that drove by. It created a shadow so much that you can actually see my tripod shadow. And if it hit the model, which it did, she moved a little bit, we got that blur. Another reason why I think this picture didn't work is because my light painting overpowered the picture. It was too high and we, we kind of hid the skyline. So I decided I wouldn't light paint that high anymore. So now we're finally cooking with fire. We have the background exposed right, we have our model exposed right, and we have the tube exposed right. So we have a flash strobing our model at about a 45 degree angle. You never wanna strobe our model from behind the camera because then it's boring flat light. Then we're using a holographic sugar tube from lightpainting.store behind her that's creating that awesome colorful tube light. And the flashlight is on a strobe mode. So all together, this is working perfectly. This one's looking okay as well. I think we finally land on this one. What I really like about this picture is the pattern. And what I'm gonna notice right away is that the tube kind of overexposed because I think I changed the tube. It was a little bit brighter. And you can notice that it's overexposed when you bring the exposure down. You can see that there's some highlights that don't come back, but that's okay. That's all part of light painting and learning. So first we're gonna bring the highlights down. I think that looks good. We're gonna bring 
the exposure down a little bit and you notice our model is looking a little bit dark, that's okay. That's why we use a mask. So in the mask, we're going to go ahead. We're going to see if we select subject. If it selects her, it actually selected everything. We don't want to do that. So we're going to delete that mask. And we're just going to use this brush tool and we're going to make it a little bit smaller. And we're just going to brush it on her and brush it on her. We're going to actually hit overlay. Make sure it's just on her. Perfect. She's looking awesome because we want to kind of light paint her a little bit, make her a little bit brighter. Turn off the overlay and make her a little bit brighter and a little bit warmer to kind of match that circle. I think that's starting to look awesome. You can see her a little bit better. We might even add a little bit of clarity to make her a little bit sharper, a little bit pop a little bit more. The next thing my eye goes to in this picture is this rock. So I want to do another mask and brush in this rock and we're going to dim that down maybe bring down the shadows a little bit it's a little bit too dark now perfect bring down the highlights awesome so now our eye goes right to the model and the light painting and the colors are great awesome shot of our model this one we're doing the light blade if you remember i kind of ran around with this light blade it had the yellow glue in it that made it this yellow tone and um, i like the patterns we're still kind of working at it this one's really cool too but this one was my favorite and the reason for it is because i love her expression i love the pose i love the light pattern a couple modifications i would do maybe crop in a little bit well, maybe a little too much come back great um, i think the attention goes right to her I might even make it a black and white. So let's try that. Lower some of the highlights. Raise the whites a little bit. And that's kind of like a fun, really cool picture. I didn't think it needed too much editing. I think it looks awesome. Next, we started playing with fire. And this is that fiber optic brush that you guys remember seeing. And we did a bunch of variations of this because I was trying to get different expressions from the model. Remember, we're always modifying and growing and adjusting and trying to do th different things. And this one, she was just pissed. And she was like a superhero with the fire in her hand. I like both. I would say when I look at these pictures, maybe I like this one a little bit better. A couple things that draw my eye are the light from behind so like a couple things I would think about is when I went to set up these shots I had planned on lowering my camera a little bit so I wouldn't get these tents in the background in my shot because they're distracting these would be those distracting elements that I would like to eliminate from the beginning but I forgot to go back and do that after our opening take and now they're in the background but don't despair we can get rid of them in Lightroom so we're going to use the band-aid tool we're going to make sure it's in heel and we're going to kind of overwrite these little distracting elements and because this is in the dark no one really cares about this it doesn't need to be perfect if it needed to be perfect i would definitely take this into photoshop and do it but that kind of eliminated some of those distracting elements back there another thing that's distracting to me is this hot spot of the street light let's go over here get rid of that See if we could kind of make it look like these other branches. Perfect. So when you're doing your edits, think about how I can kind of make it even better than it is. How can I get rid of the distracting elements? Highlight the story I'm trying to tell. I'm going to crop a bit. So she's a little bit more in the center of the frame. And I really think that's awesome. I could do one other thing. I can do a radial gradient filter around her and I'm going to do an invert. I'm going to kind of darken the background around her. A little bit like that so it draws a little bit more attention to her not too much because we don't want it to look dark but i think that kind of works she looks awesome last thing i would do is the fire here is a little bit this rock's a little bit too lit up so we're going to make one more mask we're going to bring the gradient filter in and we're going to lower the highlights try and bring it in a little bit so you don't see it as much great I think that's perfect. Let's move on. So now we've incorporated the hula hoop into our photos and it is so much fun. Look at all those colors. The hula hoop can do a lot of things. It has a rainbow feature and that is what we were doing. We had our model holding an umbrella because why not? And she struck a pose. The only thing I think that could be improved is her face is a little bit dark. So I will use a mask. I will make it a brush filter and I'll make it a little bit smaller. 
We're going to light paint in her face. You can see I'm adding the mask with the green light. It could be a little sloppy. That's okay. We're going to make it a little bit brighter and a little bit warmer. And I think she looks better already. Awesome. Moving on to our next photo. See how it's so easy. We could crop up a little bit to draw a little bit more attention to her, but I think that's perfect. And this was our final shot. And the concept for this one was to make it look like she was a Hollywood starlet. And we used the strobe, which is the flash behind her. And we strobed her over and over and over again. She held her pose. She kind of looked like at her hand. I thought it was really fun. And a couple things I would do to make this picture even better is dim the foreground. The rock got bright because we kind of pointed the light at the rock when we flashed. So let's use the gradient filter to make it a little bit darker. We're going to bring down the highlights. We're going to dim it a little bit more. Great. We could see that the gradient tool actually dimmed her feet a little bit, which I don't really mind actually. We could go remove that if we wanted to, but I think it's okay. And I would just crop in. I feel like we come a little bit in on the sides. Great. And I think that's kind of a fun picture we got going on here. Let's bring down the highlights a little bit. We could add a little clarity to add a little sharpness. I would even make a brush tool and further darken this rock. Because again, your eyes are going to go where the brightest spots are. And the brightest spots are kind of right over here. Great. Dimming that down. And perfect. So now we're not looking at the rock anymore. And that's really important. We only want to be looking at the model. So now that we got pictures of our Broadway starlet and I was really happy with everything we'd done, I kind of wanted to go back and show you that you don't need a person to do any light designs. You can actually just do light designing on your own and with a cool backdrop. So I busted out the hula hoop and I just started dancing with that. And we got a little bit of the city skyline behind us. And I thought that was pretty cool. If I wanted to really edit this picture, I don't like these tents from the ice skating rink behind me. So I could try the band-aid tool and trying to eliminate them, see if we could kind of match the lines up a little bit. It grabbed it from over here. Perfect. See if we could link the lines. I think that looks pretty good. You don't even notice it. I would also try and get rid of these distracting elements, but I'm not really going to do anything with this photo except for appreciate the cool lights that we painted and admire my light design. So I think it works. Another cool light design I did was with the light painting blade. And I just walked around. I did some cool martial art movements. And I think it's really unique. Um, I love the city skyline behind it. I like the light painting. I brought down the highlights a bit. I'd raise the shadows a little bit. Again, I hate this little tent kiosk there, but that's for the next picture. Again, you learn to pay attention to your background so you get rid of those distracting elements. One other thing we could do is do some light writing. And for this one, I did some light graffiti, which means I was just writing on the rocks, I heart New York City. So when you write on the rock, it's like writing graffiti, like writing with chalk. So it was really easy. I just put the flashlight down to the ground and did it like a piece of chalk. If I stood farther away from the rock, the light beam would have been wider and it wouldn't be as detailed. Here I kind of was really close, like almost scraping the flashlight against the rock. And I wrote, I heart New York like I would anyway. You'll notice that there's all these weird lights around here. This is actually my hair, <laughs> now that I look at it. And these are my shoes. And the reason for this was I stood in the same spot while I wrote the letters for a couple of the letters and the light bounced off the rock and onto my shoes. So now that we were done getting creative, I had to save my last shot for the crew. And I had Maria and Matt pose for me in a really cool way. Maria and Matt are amazing artists and photographers themselves. So we needed to feature them in the best way. And we chose the hula hoop again. Uh, we put it on a different fashion. It was just blue and green. They struck their pose and I danced around them. Uh, the only thing I would do is I'd kind of bring up the shadows for this picture. I might even warm it up a bit and uh, add a little bit of contrast. So what I love about editing my pictures is I get to go through the whole process from beginning to end and see how each picture grew from the first basic picture to adding each light to adding each light painting tool to doing each different design. It's all about experimenting, creating, growing and developing your vision.
And not every picture is going to be perfect. And that's not what this is about. It's about creating your artistic arsenal. With each kind of stroke I do, I learn, wow, I need to do that in the next shot. And then I incorporate it in the next shot. Or I saw that the way the light casted a shadow, I know I need to incorporate that in my next shot. So don't be discouraged if your first pictures are not great. Mine aren't great always either. But they grow and you build your vision. And then you end up with pictures like this. So I encourage you guys all to go out there and create. What an incredible journey this has been into the darkness. And I hope you've been inspired to go out and experiment, discover, and create. I hope you'll grab your tripod, your flashlight, and your camera and go out and enjoy the darkness like I do. If you'd like to more, know more about light painting, join me on a photo tour adventure. See the link below and I hope to see you in the darkness.